Excuse me, little dog. All right, guys. It is another cold winter night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. That would be Friday night, <coughs> December 2nd, 2022. So you guys are probably wondering what chronicle of the collapse I'm bringing you from medium.com tonight. Well, guys, we have a little conflict. It is Friday, so we're going to have to put medium.com on hold till tomorrow because Friday is, you know what Friday is. It's what I've been doing every Friday since I got here how many years ago, and it is time for my ecological meltdown roundup ramp where I go over to check in at mongabay.com with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls to see what is on their minds uh, here as the planet collapses and now in the closing month of 2022. So anyway, I am thrilled to announce, guys, it has finally happened. I, uh, I, I remember offering Rhett Butler this story in the year 2009, 13 years ago, uh, I ran this story by Rhett, and I, I guess he had no interest in it when I was down there in uh, Brazil getting a reality check. You know, in Brazil, listen, I've never been to Brazil. When I was down there in Peru, I spent the summer down there in Peru writing my book, Peruvian Plunge, which you can find, I think, on barnesandnoble.com, Peruvian Plunge. Uh, but anyway, he did not seem interested in this particular dispatch from the Peruvian Amazon. Uh, how many years ago? So I was down there, you know, getting the myth of the noble savage yanked out of me. I used to be a lefty uh, who was a big a victim of the myth of the noble savage as anybody on the planet. And then I actually went down to Peru and spent several months living in and among the noble savages in the Amazon rainforest. And boy, did my little lefty, uh, my little lefty social justice warrior uh, fantasies go flying out the window. But uh, I, I, I seriously, I, I want to say, say, Rhett, uh, I, I, am, I am genuinely proud to see that Rhett Butler has finally picked up on this story from 14 years ago. Take it away. <clears throat> Indigenous youths lured by the illegal mines destroying their Amazon homeland. An increasing number of young indigenous people, this is in Brazil's Yananami indigenous territory, are leaving their communities behind and turning to illegal gold mining lured by the promise of small fortunes and a new lifestyle. Uh, this was going on full tilt down in the Madre de Dios, the Mother of God River uh, in 2009. This is going on all over the Amazon rainforest, all over the planet. Okay, guys, noble savages are humans. You know, that this whole myth of the noble savage, I think, is very insulting to these people. They're humans. They want the moolah. They want the flat screen TV. They want the smartphone. They don't want to live uh, in, in, in some damn mud hut uh, out, out in the middle of damn nowhere eating grubs. 
You know, if, if you were a Yanomami Indian uh, living in the Brazilian Amazon, and these were your two choices, it, it, it's time to f wake up to reality, guys. I, I, I hate to be such the bearer of bad news, but if you don't want to listen to me, listen to mongabay.com. Yes. Work in the mining camps ranges from digging and removing tree roots. Well, how do you remove a tree root uh, without moving, without removing the tree that's attached to the roots? Uh, digging and removing tree roots to operating as boat pilots ferrying gold supplies and miners to and from the camps. Recruits receive nearly $1,000 per boat trip. These guys down there can make as much money in one day as they're used to making in one year. I would be doing it. You would be doing it. Cut the crap uh, uh, about this myth of the noble savage. If there are some 90-year-old men in the hole uh, still left on this planet, kiss them goodbye. Okay, guys? It's the 21st century. Smartphones rule. The structures, traditions, and health of indigenous societies are torn apart by the proximity of the gold miners and the outflow of the young generation further fuels this vicious cycle. Amid the corona panic and a lack of authorities monitoring the area, illegal mining in the region has increased drastically with 20,000 miners now operating illegally in the territory. Uh, <laughs> anyway, guys, I anybody wondering why, why Sam Mitchell uh, is, it, you know, I, I, I guess is such a racist. What I, I, I am simply trying to give you the unvarnished truth of what's going on on this planet. Okay, guys. If it is between making a thousand dollars to destroy their homeland you're going to take the money. Admit it. Anyway, all right, thank you for finally printing the story I was trying to get Manga Bay to print in 2009, but you can find my version of the story in Peruvian Plunge. Um, if you go on Barnes and Noble or Lulu.com and put in Peruvian Plunge, it's not under my name. I don't know why they give the byline to some, uh, I can't even remember. Anyway, it's Peruvian Plunge. It won't say Sam Mitchell, but it's me. <coughs> I can see, uh, it, it, anyway, I better just make it quick. Um, as shark numbers plummet, nations seek ban on devastatingly effective gear. Good luck. Uh, the U.S. and Canada are seeking a ban in the Pacific Ocean on two fishing devices known as wire leaders and shark lines that have proven devastatingly effective at catching huge numbers of sharks. Uh, good luck on that. They, they wouldn't have uh, made the things that they weren't. That's the reason they're using them is because they're disastrously effective. Good luck. Okay.
Hey, we have an interview with one of my old heroes, uh, Marina Silva. Uh, if you don't know who Marina Silva is, I really want to go listen to this interview. Brazil's new environmental future under Lula. Q&A with Marina Silva. This is, uh, you know, YouTube. Uh, Manga Bay has a YouTube channel, and they're featuring this interview, which I really want to go and listen to this. I highly advise. So Marina, she was uh, Lula's environment minister uh, back when he was, you know, was president back when, and she resigned in protest because uh, the planet-saving Lula was supporting all of these uh, planet-eating uh, operations down there in the Amazon. Was, was it Belo Monte that she finally said, I've, I've, I've had enough of this uh, two-faced crap from this dude? And uh, so I, I'm thinking that they have probably kissed and made up. Uh, my guess is that uh, Maria uh, will be uh, his new environment minister again, and hopefully she will not be resigning in protest here in the near future. All right, what is going on with zero deforestation pledges? To be effective, zero forestation pledges need a critical mass. I would say to be effective, zero deforestation pledges need some balls. They need some balls. They need some teeth. They need some spine. But critical mass. Yes. The importance of rapidly halting tropical, tropical deforestation to achieve net zero emissions was a key message at this year's climate summit. Yes, but corporate efforts to this end have stalled for decades. Huh. Cattle Soy and palm oil are the main commodities driving deforestation and destruction of other important ecosystems. Yes, zero deforestation commitments from the, from the companies are seen as an important way to reduce deforestation globally. Yes. Uh, please. Um. <laughs> Is there anybody on this planet at this, at this stage believing the zero deforestation uh, commitments? They're crap. They're crap. They're greenwashing bright green lies. Every one of them, every single one of them is a bright green lie. Okay. Moving on. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to sit here and read the uh, title of this one and move along. Biodiversity credit market must learn from carbon offset mistakes. Yes. <laughs> oh, please. Biodiversity credit markets. Uh, just what? Just when you thought you had hit bottom with these uh, carbon offset credits and these zero deforestation commitments, just when you think you've hit bottom, 
and have heard it all. You hear knocking from below with the green washing, bright green lies. I can't remember where DACA is. D-H-A-K-A. -A. Does anyone here know where DACA is? Wherever DACA is, you will be shocked to hear that DACA's ailing sewage system threatens human and environmental health. Existing sewage treatment plants in DACA treat only 30% of sewage waste. Yes. Uh, if anybody on this planet, from Sancho Panza to Rhett Butler, believes for one minute that DACA is, is treating 30% uh, of their sewage waste. I have some carbon offsets to sell you in uh, New Guinea. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, environmental peace building must pay more attention to armed groups. I guess they will. Yes. Uh, state and non-state State and non-state armed groups often play crucial roles in conflict and cooperation over natural resources. I would really love to, uh, to disentangle that sentence and get to the bottom of it. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. This post is a commentary. Yes, I bet it is. Okay. We were talking about uh, gold mining in, uh, in, where was it, Brazil. Let's go over to Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, about 72% of gold miners poisoned with mercury at artisanal mining sites in Cameroon. You know, I've been hearing this, this, this uh, bullshit word, artisanal. I'm noticing it showing up in uh, uh, in the mainstream media. Okay, what is the definition of artisanal? Artisanal of a product, especially food or drink, uh, a, a, of a product made in a traditional or non-mechanical way. Yes. Okay, so in this instance, we're talking about artisanal mining. This is talking about producing gold in a traditional or non-mechanized way. For those of you who do not know, what artisanal means. Okay. About 72% of gold miners poisoned with mercury at traditional non-mechanical non mining sites in Cameroon. Yes. A recent study reveals that about 72% of miners at artisanal gold mining sites in Cameroon show mercury levels at concentrations above the limit recommended by the World Health Organization. Mercury use in artisanal mining yes, has been banned by the Cameroonian government since 2019 as hundreds of deaths continue to occur yearly at mining sites. Hmm. I'm sure that mercury, uh, artisanal, I I'm sure uh, that, you know, when these sub-Saharan Africans were mining gold uh, 10,000 years ago, what they would do 
is they would probably go on to Amazon.com and order some uh, non-mechanized traditional mercury to uh, for their artisanal mining. So one more time, guys, if you ever see this bullshit term, artisanal mining, okay? This is one more of these greenwashing bullshit, vaguely noble savage related uh, terms uh, that, that are unadulterated horseshit. And they mean nothing. It, 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 it is just one more bright green lie. There is nothing artisanal about gold mining in Cameroon, in Brazil, in Peru. There has not been for how many thousands of years. Can we cut the crap? Uh, here we go. <laughs> This is not the onion, this is Manga Bay. Report calls on palm oil firms to make up for nearly one million hectares, otherwise known as two and a half million acres of forest loss. Yes, palm oil companies across Southeast Asia are liable for the recovery, the recovery of a Puerto Rico sized area of rainforest because of their history of environmental harm, a new report shows. The Earthqualizer Foundation derived the figure of 2.17 million acres. Yes based on the deforestation that the companies continued to carry out after they became aware that an increasing number of buyers had adopted sustainability policies. Yes. <sighs> D -d -d -d. And uh, don't, don't even get me going uh, on this new uh, biodiversity conference. I guess this is COP15 being led by China. In Canada, China is leading a biodiversity conference, which we will be hearing more about next week. Okay. But going into it, a recent report from the conservation partnership BirdLife International reveals that populations of 49% of avian species are decreasing. That figure in the group's last report in 2018 was 40%. Habitat loss, hunting, and fisheries bycatch otherwise known as humans, humans, and humans, continue to threaten birds. Yes. Uh, scientists say the new conference is an opportunity for countries to implement conservation measures such as protecting 30% of the planet by 2030. But uh, anyway, guys, I want to, uh, I want to uh, move ahead. Okay, so I I've been hearing about this 30, save 30% 30 of the planet. So, but now, I, I guess we have all sorts of even more radical ideas. Okay. We have 30% of the planet, you know, where humans get 70%, everybody else 
is 30%. But now we're having the question, what can half or whole earth conservation strategies do for orangutans? There we go. So now we have a 30% split. We have a 50-50 split. Humans take half. The other 10 million species take half. Or I guess some real radicals are suggesting we give, just give the whole damn planet to the orangutans. Let them have it. Let them have the whole planet. The whole Earth. In a recent study, a team of researchers attempted to predict how the application of two global conservation ideas, I guess they didn't do the 30% Earth. They left that one off the table. So, two global conservation ideas, half Earth and whole Earth, would impact orangutan conservation on the island of Borneo. Numbers of all three species of orangutans continue to drop due to habitat loss by humans and killing by humans, despite an estimated one billion dollars spent on conservation efforts in the past two decades. The researchers surveyed orangutan experts about their thoughts on the application of the two ideas on Borneo. Okay. The resulting analysis predicts continued declines for Borneo's orangutans under both the half-earth and the whole-earth paradigms. Though they report that orangutans would fare better under half-earth. So orangutans will do better if they get half the earth and humans get the other half instead of the, maybe I un misunderstand the whole earth. I have to admit I haven't read the article. I'm going to have to write, you know, come back and read this full article. Maybe they're talking about giving the whole planet to humans and just screw the orangutans. In which case they would probably do better in the half earth if that's what the whole earth is, is giving it all to humans. Proponents of the whole earth paradigm argue that the authors of the study misinterpret some of the idea's central tenets. I'm going to have to come back and uh, look into the whole earth if uh, the, the radical idea of protecting an entire planet compared to 30 or 50 percent. Uh, all right. What a surprise. Indonesia's Supreme Court rules President Joko Widodo. Joko Widodo is not liable for 2015 fires. Yes, this, the ruling overturns three previous court rulings that found President Joko Widodo to be liable for the disaster. Uh, the plaintiffs, a group of citizens and environmental activists, have lambasted the court's decision saying it raises questions over the government's seriousness in tackling the annual fire problem. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, okay. How about cutting tusks off elephants to reduce human elephant conflict? Yes. How about cutting the arms off humans to reduce the human-elephant conflict? Uh, anyway. All right, 
write more about this cop, whatever. Don't have time for it. Uh, more on cop 27. Okay. Uh, guys, it's freezing. And I realized that let's have one more story on orangutans. I'm kind of in an orangutan mood today. <clears throat> Indonesia's orangutans declining amid lax and laissez-faire law enforcement. The widespread failure by Indonesian law enforcers to crack down on crimes against orangutans Yes, is what is allowing them to be killed at persistently high rates, a new study suggests. Yes, it is the cops' fault for not cracking down on crimes against orangutans. It has nothing to do with the people committing crimes against orangutans. It's the cops' fault. The study characterizes as remarkably lax and laissez-faire the law enforcement approach when applied to crimes against orangutans as compared to the country's other iconic wildlife species such as tigers. Take a wild guess what was the most prevalent crime against orangutans. And it is not chaining female orangutans by the ankle to a post and gang raping them. Okay, does anybody think I'm joking? That uh, these bastards over there are chaining female orangutans to post and charging uh, these bastards to gang rape them. This is not a joke. Okay? This is, this, this is some twisted, sick shit. One more reason humans need to go. But gang raping orangutans is not the number one crime being committed against orang orangutans. The number one crime against orangutans is killing, killing was the most prevalent crime against orangutans, huh? The study found when analyzing 2,229 reports of crimes against orangutans, killing was followed by capture, which probably could include gang rape, possession or sale of infants, harm or capture of wild adult orangutans. Now that's where the gang rape comes in due to conflicts. Uh, the study authors call for stronger deterrence and law enforcement rather than relying on rescue, release, and translocation strategies that do not solve the core crisis of the net loss of wild orangutans. Oh, God. Why do I do this every week? So, uh... Don't worry, tomorrow I will be back at medium.com. I think we're going to, I think tomorrow our uh, pick of the day is what will collapse look like? So if, 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 if looking out your window, looking through the windshield of your gas sucking car, driving down the road, does does not show you what collapse looks like. Tune in to Collapse Chronicles tomorrow and we will find out what collapse looks like. Until then, uh, 
get out there and enjoy uh, enjoy I'm gonna go watch a Netflix documentary on some uh, serial murder in Texas to cheer myself up. Bye guys.